G'day, it's uh, Ian here from FPV Power. Just going to give a quick uh, rundown on how our um, uh, motor PWM works. We've got two versions, as you can see, a 30 amper and a 50 amper. So maximum continuous 30 amp, maximum continuous 50 amps. And for the test, uh, we only use the 30 amp. So I'll put the 50 amp aside, focus on the 30 amp, uh, and for the test, uh, actually, let me just go through what you get. So what you get uh, in the kit is not the multimeter. Uh, what you get is the, P P the PWM unit, which is, you know, that's, that's how it comes in just like that with the uh, uh, 50 amp Anderson plugs already uh, defaulted, already um, uh, connected and terminated. So what you get uh, other than the actual PWM unit, you also get another two Anderson 50 amp plugs, in, uh, including the actual terminals which are inside, which you have to terminate yourself to your motor, to your batteries. So they'll come as a two sets completed. And one thing to note about Anderson plugs, they there's no female or, or, or male or female plugs. Um, they're all the same and they'll all fit. It's just the way that um, they've got it. So you don't have to get a pair of male and female Anderson plugs, or it is just one Anderson plug, and they will all be uh, they can be used uh, with each other. So hope that makes sense. And for this test, I'm using a load, which is a halogen light, uh, which will uh, basically simulate the motor and the battery source. It's just one of our uh, other lithium batteries, our LiPo batteries, just for the uh, to simulate battery. On your PWM, on the right hand side is always battery. On the 50 amp one, on the right hand side is also battery. Uh, we're going to update the stickers later on to have the label. So right now I'll just use the, um, the, the, the marker pen just to label. On the right hand side is battery and on the left hand side is motor. On the battery side, on a 30 amp, positive is on the right hand side, negative is on the left. On the 50 amp, Negative is on the right, positive on the left. That's very important to follow. And on the actual output, which is the motor, so battery is input, <coughs> motor is output. On the output, negative, positive, it doesn't really make sense to label it negative or positive or have a red and black to differentiate because a uh, DC brush motor, um, you can reverse it. You can reverse the current and then the motor will spin the other way. So in this case, it's a halogen lamp. I can actually put the, the positive and negative on the, on the two prongs, it can be this way, or I can reverse it, doesn't matter. Um, same with the motor, it ain't going to blow up. Um, it's, all it is, it just turns the direction of the motor one way or the other way. So <clears throat> what you need to do is when you test it um, on your motor, is to plug it in and see when you put it on drive, if the motor is spinning forward, meaning you're giving it a full, full throttle forward, and when you turn it on, does the motor spin? in the forward direction. If it's not, all you do is just switch it over. So what you need to do is basically uh, confirm the direction of the turn of the motor before you solder it and put it all in. To change the Anderson plugs, it's very easy. Change it one side to the other side. Look on YouTube, how do you terminate Anderson plugs? And there's plenty of tutorial and it's quite easy. Flat screwdriver, pop it open, switch them around if you have to. So it's no biggie if you, if you solder it up and you plug it in and it's wrong, just swap it around. So let's go for ahead for the test. Okay, first of all, we will input, turn this off. This is my power source. Uh, just a quick note, if you were to accidentally plug in your battery onto the motor output side, so the, uh, you've got your battery connected to your motor, it's labeled, and you've got your motor plugged into the battery side. So you basically flip the input and the output because of the nature of the um, Anderson plug, you can do that. All it is is your motor will just go, go full power, that's all. And you notice it straight away. Uh, nothing will blow up, just that you get the full voltage and the dial, no matter what position, if it's closed, or if it's uh, shut off or open full, it doesn't control anything. The power will be full. So the voltage that you plug into the motor side on the battery side will be full voltage regardless of the position of the dial. So no harm done, nothing will blow up. There we go, power's in. Uh, and my load, which is my light. Plug it in, there we go, that's in. Oh, bumped the camera, sorry about that. Now uh, let's turn it on, here we go. As you can see, intensity, that's full throttle. Now the, the camera's gonna compensate and try to keep a, a constant brightness, but as you can see, it's dimming down. Dimming up, maximum there, and minimum 
you can even control it to just a a glow let's have a look at that there we go that's just a nice little glow there and just for interest sake I'll put the probes over here maybe this side let's plug it in Oop, pump the camera again turn it on and you can see the voltage as I just like to pause the video just to make a note that if you have no load connected to your output port which is the motor connection if the motor is not connected and you're trying to take a reading with the multimeter it's going to fluctuate on full voltage you will not get an accurate reading and it will not work if you want to test it you always need to um, have a load connected and then you can test the voltage as you turn the dial up or down so at the moment the voltage is zero Turn the power on. Maximum is at the moment. It's uh, let me just push this in. 15.8 volts. 15.8. As the turn is down. 14, 12, 11, 10, and it drops rapidly as you go down on, on the dial. Moves down a bit more. That's 1.3 volts. That's 0.7 volt. That's already nothing. There we go. And maximum again on the dial, and it's 15.8 volts all the way down. Six volts. So the theory behind a PWM is you're not using resistors to lower the voltage. Um, to get the motor to spin on at a lower RPM, you need to lower the voltage. And by using resistors, it's actually a little heater. Um, that's basically uh, burning off the a extra voltage to give you a lower voltage so your motor spins lower So the slower you go the more heat is wasted through the resistor if you're running at full throttle using your stock um, Electric outboard then you're running pretty much the most efficient. There's no resistors It's going it's giving you the full whatever the battery voltage is it's going straight to your motor But of course um, at running at full throttle ain't going to give you a, a, a long run time um, but if you turn the uh, throttle down on your upboard, um, you actually drop in the voltage. And how does it drop the voltage? Is by using resistors or series of resistors, uh, which will uh, cause heat on the resistors, and therefore you're actually wasting heat, wasting energy to reduce uh, voltage. And then of course your motor prop will uh, spin slowly. Whereas a PWM is actually um, it's a it's a duty cycle. It's a pulse width um, pulse width module. It actually uh, gives it on, off, on, off, and the timing on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, or on, off, on, off. So the actual uh, PWM cycle, the pulse width cycle. So that can be quite technical if you just jump online and just uh, look up Google PWM and how it works. PWM controlling motors, PWM controlling LEDs. Uh, there is no uh, loss of energy to heat, to resistors, uh, except for whatever it uses to run the circuit, which is peanuts. Um, so that's basically how our PWM works. 30M.